Okay, folks, I wanted to uh, give you a little bit of a tutorial considering render settings for your final midterm project. Um, remember, for this project, you need to have five different views uh, from your scene, and uh, I just want to talk about how to finish those up and make them look really good. So, to begin with, uh, you know, I talked last time about this uh, basic scene that I created, you know, just a few objects in a room space. Um, simple lighting, you know, not much sort of information here. Um, essentially, you know, when this renders out, we see the room is lit by a physical sky, um, and in the space we have some windows that let the light in, we have a little bit of an ocean scene in the background. This takes about seven seconds to render, which is pretty good, but, uh, you know, I think there can be many improvements uh, in this scene. So let's take a look at what we can do. The first thing that's going to help this scene is to add something that's called global illumination. So if you just go to your render settings right here, open it up, effect global illumination. Now the default um, is actually going to be you know pretty nice. So if we take a look at that, uh, we just render this out. It's going to take a lot longer to render, but the effect is going to be quite noticeable. So what it does is it starts out with an irradiant cat cache prepass, which is going to kind of essentially take a look at the scene, calculate where light is going to go, where it's going to bounce based on the type of materials that you have, and um, you know how it's going to uh, be sort of reflected in the scene as well as cast in, in direct sort of ways. So immediately what you can see is there's a whole different sort of level of lighting uh, in the walls. You can see that there's a different gradient in the walls. We're seeing some of the color being cast into the walls. And also we're getting a much better use of light um, sort of illuminating in the scene. So if we just look between those, so that was 44 seconds as opposed to our 7 seconds. But notice the difference, especially in the walls and the ceiling. You can see how light is coming in in a similar way to the ground here. But then it goes and it bounces around the room in many different ways. Uh, to create a much more realistic sort of setting. So that's the basic default setting and that's going to help out a lot in your scene. If we want to improve that a little bit, we can go back to the render settings and there's a few things that we can do. The primary method which is irradiant cache, which is good, and you can really just experiment with these different settings. Um, I think the irradiance cache is pretty good to start with. I found that I like this light mapping setting. So the secondary method, if you put light mapping, it's going to give you um, some samples to choose from. Also, if you want to speed things up a little bit, you can change, like for example, in the um, irradiance cache. Um, if we click on here, you can the you can change the record density from medium to just low. That's going to speed some things up. Uh, in light mapping, um, well, this actually looks pretty good. But here, you can the samples you can go to low as well. So those two things are just going to kind of speed it up. See how it looks that way? If you want to increase it, then you can increase it for a longer render and a more accurate sort of render. So those things are going to help. But primary method, irradiance cache, secondary method, light mapping, and let's see what happens. Now remember, I lowered the settings on those as well, so it might be a similar sort of speed. We'll see. Uh, so in this case, it starts out with the light mapping prepass, uh, and immediately it kind of calculates some things, which is great, so you can kind of see what it's going to look like immediately. Then it's going to go through its irradiance cache and then render this out. Um, so we can already see that it's a much warmer um, uh, sort of light that's cast in. So it's sort of, you know, if you imagine the daylight casting into this white room, it's really going to illuminate it a bit more, you know. So, uh, you know, I think my physical sky was set to be, you know, like, 7.30 in the morning just as the light is getting up and casting through. I also like what it's doing to the windows here and I just think that it, it generally illuminates the space in a much more interesting way. I don't necessarily like what's happening with the walls. I think if we increase the accuracy that would help. But also what we can do here is increase, um, is to add another thing called ambient occlusion. But let's take a look first. So here's our first one. Second one, dark, pretty dark. Kind of not really like morning light from my point of view, uh, but this one more illuminated in the whole scene, uh, which I think is nice. Okay, so let's keep going and see what we can do here. Um, let's go here uh, to the render settings and add ambient occlusion. The default uh, is going to be pretty good. I mean, you can mess around with these things, but the default is pretty pretty good. And um, 
I'm just going to render this out now and see what the difference is here. This is going to add a little bit more time. We went um, we went down in time because we set our low our settings down for the irradiance cache and sampling, which is good. Uh, but with ambient occlusion, we might go back up. So first render was seven seconds, second render 44, third render 28 seconds, and now we are rendering out pretty quick as well. Looks like we're going to be at another 28 maybe. Uh, let's see, but also notice what happens here. Um, the ambient occlusion, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of locate where surfaces are meeting and it's going to add a little bit of noise, a little bit of diffuse shadow, and so if we look in between these two, added a few seconds, we're at 35 seconds now. If we look between these two, this is without ambient occlusion, this is with ambient occlusion. You notice that it really gives a darker sort of setting to those corners, which is nice. Also notice the floor, like around the bottoms of these objects. Check, take a look at the blue object there. You know, you get a much denser kind of cast around it, which is which is nice. I think it gives a more realistic sense to those, uh, you know, minute details. One thing I'm noticing in this is that the shadows, notice the sort of pixelated staircase looking shadows, especially in the sphere and the, and the tube here. Even the water in the background is a little bit pixelated. So what we can do there is we can change the uh, render settings. We can go to anti-aliasing. And here you can change this from geometry to best, and that's going to improve things a bunch. You can mess around with these a bit more if you'd like, but I think for now, just the default settings, we're going to see a bit of improvement. So let's render that out. That might add a little bit more time as well. But still, if we're under a minute for these renders, that's not bad. Of course, my resolution is 800 by 600. Your final resolution is going to be, um, I think, double or maybe more. Check Blackboard for those render settings so you know what exactly to do. Um, but really, you know, you want to go through this and, and see what's going to help out your file, what's going to make it the best render possible. And then when you go to the camera views, you don't have to worry about messing around with the, the sort of uh, lighting and details again. You can just keep what you have and, and work from there. All right, so this is definitely a little bit slower, but that's fine. We get uh, a much more realistic quality to the water in the background. Notice that the shadows are not so, they're a little bit smoother now, and uh, we have a much you know, nicer rendered scene. So we go from this one without ambient occlusion to ambient occlusion and then finally with anti-aliasing just a little bit of improved softness and smoothness in the scene which I think is really nice. Okay so those are some things that are really going to help um, and then you know from here again you want to drop in multiple cameras give different views um, so I have another camera in here we can go to default camera 2 I'll uh, render this out, and you can see a different sort of point of view. I'll pause this for a second. Okay, so I rendered out my other scene here, and you can see it's this one took a little bit longer. Different viewpoints, different information, reflection is going to be different render times, so keep that in mind. But, you know, essentially, uh, I have a few different views. You have to have five different views or more, if you'd like, to show the scene, to show objects in detail, to show the lighting, to show all the elements of your scene that you have. So have this ready for Tuesday. I look forward to seeing it.